morning, everybody. Welcome to the June 18th uh, planning call uh, for, the, for the Open Crowbar community. Uh, we have a couple of agenda items to go through, and uh, I would make a uh, last call to see if anybody else has other ones to add. Excellent. Um, so let me let me start with the actual. Uh, sorry, the thing we should do is actually start with things that uh, ads that were things that were accomplished in the last sprint. So we should start with review. Victor, do you want to talk about the uh, the pull changes that went through and um, some of the capabilities that were brought back or added from that? Sorry, let me get back around to join me. No worries. Um, yeah, so the main thing that uh, I did over the last uh, over the last week was to pull back, it was to uh, fix up the, uh, the support that we had for deploying and using a Chef server. And it did rotted a little bit and uh, got that back up in shape and uh, arranged for everything to use it so that my life would be much easier trying to make perk shelf from multiple bar plants work. Because previously, oh. um, the Berks, the we kind of on using Berk Shelf to help us uh, manage and pull in upstream cookbooks. That way, we, don't, we didn't have to do things like maintain our own fork of the Apache cookbook because life is too short. Um, however, it turned out that uh, using that in combination with Chef Solo everywhere, um, Berks files aren't composable, so I couldn't just take a bunch all the Berks files that we needed and glom them together and have a reasonable expectation of it working. So the easiest way to deal with that was to bring back support for Chef Server, which can, which uh, you can do Berks uploads from all the stuff and all the right things will wind up being installed on the Chef Server to operate correctly. That, does that mean we get the benefit of Knife also? As a as a command uh, intro. Yeah. So that means all the nodes are registered in Chef, and you can do Chef operations outside of Crowbar if you want. Um, yes, although Crowbar uh, is uh, Crowbar assumes that it has ownership of everything that uh, it registered. So if you uh, do things like uh, you know mess around with a run list or tech some attributes, uh, we're going to blow them away the next time we do something with it. And I don't have a reasonable story to uh, accommodate uh, outside of crowbar changes to chef objects that crowbar thinks it controls at this point. That, that's uh, perfectly reasonable. I, it's just the, the ability to touch everything through knife is a very handy uh, it's a very handy tool, and so having it available again is means that we don't have to implement that in uh, Crowbar necessarily. Right? Um, there are functions. Well, there are functions that uh, we'll have to implement in Crowbar a little bit uh, just for use by the roles. For instance, um, we don't have a provision to create encrypted data bags, and I'm thinking that the easiest way to do that for things that will require them is to let the role pick the attributes that it wants to put in an encrypted data bag and stuff them in there. Okay. Um, so we'll need to expose some of that functionality. But uh, the Chef Jim uh, provides APIs to do that, and we can just package them up in ones that are slightly simpler to use. Or let people grovel through the Chef Jim on their own and figure it out. <laughs> It just depends on what people see as valuable. Yes. Mm -hmm. Cool. Uh, and you want to talk about the squid proxy stuff? Because every, everything I've been hearing is that it's, just, it's a really important function. And it, we, we sort of put it in, and I need to do some better work promoting why it's important. But, yeah. Um, this is work that isn't quite merged yet. It's in my latest uh, pull request. But one of the things that I did there was to um, lift the we. In Open Crowbar, we've always set up a squid proxy as part of uh, deploying uh, the provisioner server, um, which is you know the Apache server that we use to do all of our internal cluster-related HTTP file serving stuff. And we've always had a squid proxy in place so that you could deploy a working cluster without needing to let the compute nodes have an IP address that was routable to the public internet. Um, 
So the mode of operation that I've always done my development on was the compute nodes that I test on um, when I'm deploying them as KVM nodes, they don't get bound to a bridge that has access to the outside world. It's a completely isolated thing, and whenever they need to pull packages from the internet, they always do through the proxy that lives on the admin node. Um, that gives us a kind of a layer of insulation from the internet and also gives us a nice point for uh, auditing and caching. Because um, if you're deploying a thousand node clusters, you don't want to pull down a thousand copies of you know, all the latest updates to CentOS every time you deploy something you want to let Squid pull down one and cache it for everyone else to use. Um, so the latest changes that I've made in the Squid proxy support was to um, actually lift that out from being deployed by the provisioner um, and deploy it as part of the initial bootstrap process when we're setting up uh, the other servers, the other services that uh, Crowbar relies. So it goes that uh, we download and install the packages that we need as part of bootstrap.sh. Um, then when we get to actually standing up a production or a development server, we we set up PostgreSQL and we set up Squid and mangle all of the proxy stuff on the admin node so that it's set correctly. And then we deploy Crowbar. Yeah, I'm, I'm that finding that everything that Crowbar does winds up uh, all, all of the all of its. Uh, HTTP traffic to the outside world all goes through Squid, and so it all gets cached properly. Right, and then we're also saying that the admin node can be the uh, uh, the gateway for the, uh, op the host operations, right? Mm, gateway is a pretty specific term. It's the proxy host okay. operations. Yeah, gateway means something in IP space, and it's, it's that's a that. good that's a good point. But the goal is that the hosts don't have to have outbound internet access. And that's only the admin node, right? Correct. Okay. Which so we Squid found is actually a proper cleanup uh, when you update, uh, remove the old old versions. What? Huh? So the when you update, what? when you pull the new bits, does it uh, uh, clean uh, removes old 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 bits, old versions? Are you talking about it? Sorry, to repeat. So, are you talking about in Squid? Yes. I mean, Squid will eventually throw away things that aren't used, so that's how the cleanup happens. Okay. That's just squid being squid. We don't have to worry about that. All right. Thanks. We tell squid, hey, yeah. you can use uh, X. Uh, we we can use you can use X amount of disk space for your caching purposes, and once you start filling it up, start throwing away things that haven't been used in a while. No, don't talk about pre-populating the cache. All right, I won't. Um, <laughs> One one thing one thing to note is if you're using a Docker admin, then your squid and it, the squid cache that's getting set up on that Docker admin, I believe, is getting blown away every time. But so you want an external squid cache on your in your in your network in addition to the one we're going to set up on the admin node. Yeah, it'd be easy enough to arrange that not to happen. And if we wind up um, wanting to support Docker, a uh, Docker admin as a way to actually run in production. We need to do that anyways, but um, yeah, for now, for now, if you're running a set of Docker, this would <laughs> set of Docker should be talking to an external squid to do all the actual caching. I, I suspect a, a true Dockerite, uh, Dockerson, Docker, I don't know what to call him, um, would tell would tell you that we should really deploy Crowbar with like six different containers and then just swap the the Crowbar. Yeah, 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 whatever. If they want to do the work. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome to contribute that work. Um, I, oh, Tmux. That that's uh, I like that. I'm, I'm still getting used to it. Yes. Um, in the Docker admin node, uh, everything runs under 
Everything runs in a TMUX session. So you can detach from it, reattach to it, um, spin up new shells that's running inside the container, all fun stuff. And the first thing I had to figure out was how to shut it off. So if you export <laughs> TMUX equals false, it'll, it'll turn it off. It's not as handy in the development mode for me. It's pretty handy, but I start and stop my servers a lot. Um, the other thing is there's a pull in there with docs working again. Um, I, that was held off until I got BDD passing to 100%. Yay. Again, um, so that, that's in. The other thing that we accomplished that I'm really excited about is we've been using the issues tracking. Uh, so we put all the stories in and then uh, filing, filing and fixing bugs in here, uh, which is pretty cool. So that's an important change to note. We said we were going to do that. So, um, hey, I should start doing that then. Yes. And I, I have to say, it doesn't have all the promise that uh, a lovely Jira uh, um, Elastian integrated system would have, but it really is nice if you put pound and the, the ID numbers, it cross references for you. Um, which is pretty darn handy. Uh, okay. And let's see. Oh, and then uh, we started down the process of the Travis CI that Scott had suggested um, somewhere in here. Hold on. Oh, I'm in the doc section. So I actually have. Uh, the open crowbar, and I flipped the on switch and added a Travis CI file. Hey, and it passed! Hot dog, look at that. Uh, mm -hmm. Just echoes <laughs> <just echo test. laughs> But that was the goal for the sprint. <laughs> so, mission accomplished. Um, it's, uh, I actually, it's, I don't think it's voting yet into uh, GitHub, but that was the start. I like that it actually tested, the first thing it tested was uh, it adding itself. So, yay, process. Uh, so what's the ultimate goal for testing with Travis CI? Is it going to be capable of doing our whole uh, Docker admin thing, or is it just going to be doing uh, the BDD stuff? For now, I, I just want it to pass BDD. I'm happy, I'd be happy with that. I'll, I'll modify the development script to do BDD as, and then exit out of the Docker container. Um, because frankly, if, you, if we can't pass BDD 100%, it's an it's a, it's a adequate smoke indication that we've broken APIs. Um, and so yeah, you might want to keep it external to the, um, to the, to the installation scripts. Um, Travis yeah. can run those things in sequence, right? So, you know, whatever needs to be done for the initial setup of the system, and then, you know, let's just start adding a library of uh, test sequences that we want to have done, BDD being the first. We, we can do that. It's just, it has to do with the way the container uh, operates. So I just need, I need to think through keeping the container around and then killing it later. So we'll get there. Well, it'll, it'll kill it when it's done, right? So, I mean, it'll, it'll, to tranche the virtual machine. Um, but in any case, we can talk about it. But it's, it seems pretty straightforward, Scott, so, mm -hmm. um, and not hard to play with. So this is uh, something for next sprint. Um, okay, so we got that, talked about that. Um, I did go through and do some of the docs listing and try and, and list out uh, missing documentation areas. Um, one of the things that I would love to have somebody do is, hey, I did this too, um, is to actually go through the deploy guide and then while you're going through it, put in some screen pictures. Um, and then, of course, as you find things that are busted, do things that are busted. So there is there is a Oops, sorry, I went to the wrong spot. Uh, as I, I've been playing through some of this stuff and building, I've been trying to work in the deployment guide, and so the deployment guide actually walks through the whole create process. 
and um, but it would it could it would really be helpful to have screenshots in this to help people and potentially break this into sub documents and then I've been adding things as I find them like uh, uh, troubleshooting tips for deployment and then Victor I could use some help um, just building out the the, the port mapping list um, of all the services that we've exposed. I could have got I, I got lazy. I just did the ones I, <laughs> the ones I was actually troubleshooting at the moment. Um, but I think even building this out would be helpful. Um, so I'm trying to focus more on the deployment guide, uh, and that's one of those just opportunistic things to, as we go. Oh, sorry, over here. So. Um, for next sprint, it'd be helpful to work on deployment guide. Uh, Travis. Um, oh, and for the mid for the design meeting, I want to talk about. Um, I actually had a screen, uh, a concept to simplify the first step. I think I finally figured it out. Uh, okay, so we'll talk about that for the next meeting. So to follow up on a couple of those items there, right, work mm -hmm. on the deployment guide consists of run through and uh, and screenshots. Travis CI, um, I think there's there's effectively two pieces to that. The first one is is a full a full build run through. Uh, of BDD tests, and then a design for the for the voting infrastructure, and how we're going to uh, how the how the process flow is going to work. Yeah, I I would actually rather see it voting on a, on a no op, just to make sure to get the votings right. Um, yeah, that's what I mean. Right. So okay. there's I believe that there's a little bit more to it than you know just turning on voting. I think there's a bit of a design and process flow that we need to work through. All right, so let's add right, this to the time based agenda. Is that all right? Yeah. I, I think that some, like the voting, I think these are basically very small tasks that we can baseline, and I think this is a bigger a, a bigger work item. That's why I was doing that sequence. But we can talk about it at the design meeting on uh, Wednesday and drill in the details on that. Is that, is that reasonable? Mm -hmm. Okay. Hey, Victor, did your server come? Um, it says it's up for delivery. Mm, I'm not sitting know. in my yeah. list. You're just sitting in your living room? Are you working from home just so you can pick up your server? <laughs> <laughs> no, not for that reason alone. But, yeah, mine is but it, is, it, is, it is, it is, it is, it is, it is, I'll add it to my, my weightlifting regimen. Yeah. <laughs> I'll, do some, yeah. I'll do some inverted push ups with it. All right. Yeah. No, mine. It says it's out for delivery right now, which means that if it's not home, if it's not there when I get home, I'll be uh, heading down to the FedEx facility in North Austin to pick it up. Yeah, they didn't. They didn't like my little note saying leave without a signature. Haha. <laughs> Funny. Yeah, they 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 can. Yeah. Hey Rob, where was that documentation um, uh, that had the port IDs and so forth? Oh, sorry. Yeah, of course. It's in the deployment guide. I'll, I'll link it into the. Uh, let's see. There you go. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. Other other um, deliverables. I know we made some progress on the hundred node, the hundred word. I keep telling hundred words. I don't know how many words are in it. Um, definition. Let's see if I can find it. And um, I think we've got we've got a lot of text for the uh, hundred node challenge. So I'm going to formulate that into a broader uh, community thing. So actually, that's next sprint. So the idea here was to 
work with work at, find somebody in the community who had a, a hundred plus node install and and work towards towards that this isn't a development this isn't supposed to be a development effort it's supposed to be a using what we've got out of the box deployment effort um, so we'd be looking for someone who just needs to uh, get the OS on a bunch of servers yeah um, I you know and I think ideally we should talk about IPMI um, it depends on when when the timing is and what what they want to accomplish. Uh, so but is that a ver it, that's not a virtual environment? I mean, a physical a hundred node physical environment. Hundred node physical. Yeah. We want to break we want to break the crowbar crowbar one ceiling. <laughs> okay. And we want to do it in style. Uh, hmm. We're we're looking we we were going to limit the hundred node challenge only to Hawaii. But we sounds were, reasonable to have a supercomputer center less, there. Less exotic. <laughs> <laughs> less exotic. Hey, they do have super. Hey, hey, hey! They do have supercomputer centers in Hawaii. Yeah. Mao Mao Mau supercomputer center. Oh, nice place to visit. Right. <laughs> nah, I'd rather go to whatever supercomputer center services all the telescopes on the top of Mauna Kea. That sounds reasonable. I've heard the view there is totally awesome. All right. Um, but the the point is, the service part of the service arriving was uh, that we're starting we're we're bringing back the IPMI um, uh, workloads. So we had a really good design session last week about this. Um, here it is. This is the list it's over here on this pad. Uh, we talked about uh, some role naming and bringing back the conventions, and then um, I'm actually trying to use this to help document uh, creating a new workload. And then there's there's a um, actually design meeting to talk about. Let's let's add this to the design meeting because there are some uh, potential changes. Uh, to make where I was, I was starting to see where we've injected the the term bar clamp into paths and stuff. That uh, if we can change without much lift, I would change, but I'm tempted to just leave it in place. Yeah, it'd be a huge, it'd be a huge gnarly patch to change that. I I think that what we could do is we could leave the old ones in place and like let it be dual path. But I'm I'm going to look into that. That that's I think a good topic for the design meeting. Um, but the goal so but the goal for the IPMI workload is to basically bring in the old bring bring over uh, CV1 code. Uh, well, I mean, when Wayne was working on it for Dell, he got pretty much all the way done in getting the IPMI stuff working in the in the hardware workload. I thought that's what I thought too. Um, so, yes, you did. All right, I'll try and I'll try and team touch base with, with Wayne and see where where that stands and see it. I was looking for it and I I didn't. Did he do it in Open Crowbar or did he do it in uh, the V V2 repos? I don't remember. We'd have to get in touch with him to find out. Okay. I think he was doing it in the V1 repos. Arkai, do you remember? Or the, the old, the old repos? I, I thought so. I thought we never trans transitioned it over, but... Uh... Easy enough. Easy enough to find out. I, I think yeah. it was mostly working. It was the proxy bridge that was, was causing problems, and I don't think we need that anymore, so... Okay, so that that's... This is something we're working on. If we actually have some hardware to test it, um, uh, then we should be able to work against physical hardware. Uh, so I think that that ends up being one of the top priorities in next sprint. Um, and then, yeah, Victor, your old uh, you know mix stamp is still available, and. 
add the you know all, all the different servers in it. Yeah. It's just not really set up to work from home. True. Oh, and I was going to... <laughs> nice to nice to have your own your own cozy little space heater. <laughs> um, yeah, and that so, so there's other there's topics that I'm I'm postponing talking about the IDRAC and the um, IDRAC proxy, which uh, I have now that I have a server I can play with a little bit more easily. Um, looking at the original agenda. Uh, let's see. We talked about that. Did people have any other comments about the hundred node challenge besides the preference for Hawaii? Which OS? Uh CentOS or Ubuntu? CentOS for the host. For the okay. server. Let's make it more explicit because if you're gonna look for a partner, we will need to have a partner which matches that. Unless yeah, they're completely open. No, so there's there's a document about that. Let me let me pull it up. Um, I I confusingly called it hardware support. Um because I like to do that. Um no challenge. So there's there's actually a fair bit of text in this dot in this document. Let me pull it up. We Um, and so the idea was to describe, and we actually need to put the um, specs that we ordered. I'll do. We can do that in a bit. Just yeah, so I mean, we ordered more or less the same box, didn't we? We ordered a T320. It's identical. Okay. Except for the except for the asset tech. Um, so what I what I'll expect to do is actually review. So in the design meeting, we can review IPMI issues for issues. See what that is. Um, okay. Other item. Other discussion on that topic. Uh, I'm trying to go to here. And I believe we should we should need to make sure there's a story against it. Victor, I'm gonna I'm planning to close this story. And if yeah, you, that's if closable. You, and when and the, when you accept this poll, um, you can. Did you pick up that that, uh, that merge? Not yet. I'm testing it. Um, okay. Oh yeah, I did. I did make those changes that you asked for. So these things should be good. So this, these are actually both going to be fixed together. Um, and I think this is right, but I was going to add a test for it um, before we close it. And so that gets us back. This is actually a design discussion. Um, we can probably close that story. Uh, we need to review that. We'll review that on Wednesday. To do ready state prep, uh, Mike, I think that there was pieces. Oh, you and I were going to start working on some of the creating a new workload stuff. That's the next step here. Yeah, that's that's on my plate. I don't think I'll get to it till after Fourth of July, but I haven't forgotten about it. If I get back to the valley and and uh, you and I can sit down together and play a little bit. All right, so that's different. So I think we're going to need a story for the um, this is six. I'll close that afterwards. Um, I added a new, a small uh, Judd found a uh, a a bug and enhan a small enhancement. So I'll I'll nail that in. That's pretty easy. Um, but yeah, I, I would I would like as people find find things, even doc issues or stuff like that, just throw it in the bug list, and we should be able to start tracking them. Um, it would it would be really helpful because that'll allow us to track back to polls when we do polls to put them in here. 
Let me jump back over. All right, so. Ah, community website. Did we talk? Did, did uh, I think we did this in? So one of the so uh, this this is all this wonderful style is default GitHub stuff. Uh, so I I pulled uh, we cleaned up this. I'm trying to remember if if we covered this two weeks is a long time for me to remember what happened. Um, this was a result of a design meeting a little while ago, where we split these two into into different pieces. Uh, this ultimately should go to probably this page, and then we we need content. Um, trying to make it easier to to just get started and focus on starting it, um, and then link wanna, into what the documents are. Mm -hmm. Do you want to do you want to put that content on the community site, or do you want to you want to keep it in the source tree? That's an interesting discussion. I'm I'm very split on that. I'd love to hear uh, yeah. people's opinions. I mean, my preference would be to keep it in the docs, even if there's a quick start in the docs directories, and then you know generate the web version of that. However, we do that. You know, get the right, content like, in like, one place. Right. Like what? So, I I I like that of. Of not putting this. This should just be community resources and, and links to content, sort of like a, a an easier index, which keeps us from building a big page. Mm -hmm. um, so, is your thought that this is a shallow page with with deep links into the content? I I think this should be a shallow page with deep links into the content. If okay. if we go a little further, then we can potentially take the content. And render it in the same style and actually create a full website. You know, one of, one of the things I like about GitHub is it kind of renders the markdowns as if they were readmes. But the mm -hmm. thing I don't like is it doesn't give us any navigation, any reasonable navigation. So we right. could. I I did some work about six months ago to take some of that markdown stuff and actually build it into a site. You know, single source mm -hmm. for the docs, a little bit of a wrapper around it. I could pick that up and take a look at it. Right. And one of the things, one of the things that I've, I've been doing is I fixed I fixed the uh, the documentation full index and I've been tweaking it. So Mike, I, I took what you had been doing and I'd, I'd been expanding it a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, so there's a table of contents and then a full index. Um, yeah. So th this helps. I, I think the problem is when you go into the single pages here. There's no concept of tree-based navigation forward back. It, it doesn't feel like a website. It's just a collection of pages. But I had done some work in this area. Let me let me dust it off and see where it stands. Okay. I think it's you can put those links in there, Mark. You, you can put the links in the markdown. The uh, issue is then you're maintaining the links in the markdown, and there's there's kind of a meta yep. level where we can generate a lot of those links off the same source code. Um, mm -hmm. I had I had built a prototype with Sphinx that mostly uh, mostly dealt with that problem. That you're 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 right. If you were to take these docs and dump them into a site, you could add a header for each one that basically had siblings up, siblings, children, yeah. and up down navigation, which is exactly what the UI docs do, right? So this mm -hmm. same concept, same concept. Since the content is more or less static, you can build a nice nav header that resembles this stuff, the docs in the in the running product. And right. you can build a complete index and a few other niceties. Um, I had done a prototype of that against the Crowbar 1 docs quite some time ago. And the code's still lying around here. So I'll, I'll dust cool. it off and see how far I can get with it. That would be pretty exciting, because um, if, if we have this same level of, of navigation, it makes it so much easier. And one of the things that I'd love to be able to see is stuff like the principles documentation, uh, which I don't think is in here, which I'm not sure where it is here. Um, would is some, it you know, be nice to see that just made easier for the community to adopt. I've been clicking around too much. I lost track of my tabs. Um, Okay, so from that perspective, what we've said is community site. Yeah, 
Yeah. I, I would actually be interested in us taking um, the principles guides and creating creating us uh, like a white paper. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so while we're on this topic, um, on the wiki end of things, I just I, I did a minor wiki update to kind of point people towards the master docs in the in the source tree oh, because I don't think we want to start replicating con have duplicate content in many places. So let's see. This one. I think wiki page it's just a shallow introductory page. I don't know if we want to link here to the community site, but I just put in the the deep link into the actual documentation. Excellent. Now. Thank you. Yeah, we don't we really don't want people editing this. Um, oh, we can add custom sidebars. That might this might be the way to handle some of that. Huh. Okay. Um, but I do I do think that anything we can do to help that first experience is going to be helpful. Uh the, the that's a <laughs> we we really messed up in the in the original crowbar. And it became very hard to recover from that. Um, okay. So that leaves OpenStack uh, community cookbooks. And there are some uh, things in the core that needed to be added to make the OpenStack community cookbook work properly. Okay. Um, at the very least, we need to have uh, some level of support for telling Crowbar that uh, some attributes should go into data bags and encrypted data bags. Because they expect that all passwordy type information to be stuck into encrypted data bags instead of being locked onto locked into roles. Okay. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah, so we need to have some, some level of support baked in for doing that. Um, so, okay, what else? Uh, the other thing that we need, um, that's the main thing that jumps out at me. Um, there's also some things where I managed to inadvertently break how uh, cluster roles work, so I don't need to be fixed. I've been planning on doing some of that work just to get the, uh, the set cookbooks functioning again. Okay. So this and and I would say Ceph. So the Ceph cookbooks are in, are an important prereq. Well, it's not it's not a prereq, not but, that, they're, but they're a simpler thing to work on, but also happy to exercise the sorts of core functionality that we need. And it's a simple Except, target. You, know, you only really have Mons, OSBs, and. Um, yeah, yeah, Mondo's, these MDSs, and um, the gateways, and that's right. So, to be, guys, to pay attention that uh, the Ceph is going to release uh, GA by the end of the month. Uh, Ceph, uh, in, in, well, the Enterprise Ceph uh, ICE 1.2, uh, which will be running on RHEL 7. Uh, and that is uh, uh, Firefly 1.2 code base. I don't well, know if uh, in, anybody planning with, to update the cookbooks for that. That's what I'm I'm probably going to stick with Emperor until uh, I get everything working more or less correctly and then worry about uh, updating to uh, updating to later versions. Yeah, I will. I'll let you know what the status is since I'm gonna. I'm gonna get a drop of that. So, Victor, I, I recognize there's places where we we have technical changes to make in core. I think that there are people who uh, are interested in being able to drive those cookbooks, but don't know where to start. Right? We already did some work on some base cookbooks. Mm -hmm. Do we? You know, is what? I think we need to think through if somebody came in and said, "All right, I want to try to try to help make this progress go." They're not going to be fixing the clustering stuff or the encrypted data bags, but they could actually start driving the cookbooks like we had people doing a couple of months ago. Where's yeah, the, where's well, our, I mean, where's our right place to start? For, for the Ceph stuff, you really it really won't be able to make progress until the clustering stuff is fixed. 
Sure, but um, somebody could that, say build Keystone, get the Keystone cookbook going, right? The Keystone role. Yeah. As long as you'll be able to test it. Yeah. Well, that's where the Docker Docker pieces and things like that come in. So we need to figure out how to. So I would, what I think is missing is a documentation on how to um, bring in and drive the OpenStack upstreams. So if if we just said, look, this is how you use uh, Berkshelf. You set you know take just actually show somebody how to use the upstreams that we had, they could start iterating through this process. The things that, that we need to do to fix in core aren't necessarily blockers for somebody just turning through, the, turning, starting to turn the crank on integrating the upstreams. Right? There's fixes to the upstreams and patches they'll need to make, um, and they're not blocked on the other stuff. So. Or, or do you think that the encrypted database stuff blocks the um, upstreams from working right now? Because it's passwords that might. Like I said, those, those, the, un the unbreaking of cluster support and adding support for uh, being able to declare that these attributes need to go in data bags is something that we need to have working. But we can really start on a lot of upstream stuff that assumes that uh, a, a lot of upstream stuff they do use encrypted data bags in a lot of places. So we need to be able to handle that. Okay. So I, I, we have we have a priority call to make from IPMI versus uh, the encrypted data bags, and which one which one would have which one is more important within the community. Um, but I, I don't I don't know which way to guide you. I think that if uh, we had people who were interested in spinning up on the OpenStack cookbooks and were, were clamoring for it, I would I would say that that would we should look at that. But for right now, I think the IPMI is actually the bigger the hotter topic. Do people on the call feel that that's the right call? IPMI is is first. Yes. Victor, is that, does that jive with you? That's the way I would go, especially if we're talking about the 100 nodes challenge. Okay. So. I mean, it, it, it's not as if those, it's not as if uh, that work couldn't be completely parallelized if we had the appropriate amount of people willing to work on the code base. Right. Well, this is that's exactly what I'm saying. If I three times, then, you know, yeah. And I'm the bottleneck there. Makes makes perfect sense. And the 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 frankly, the, I'm the work on writing this most bang for the buck in the near term. Right. The, the reason why I'm calling it up is that if we had people saying I want to work on the OpenStack cookbooks, um, I think it's worthwhile. I'll I'll try and create some on ramp documentation to let people get spun up. That'll then drive whether or not we fix the uh, encrypted data bag thing as a priority or not. The, the thing to call out the community call is we know there's a gap as soon as, as soon as it becomes a blocking gap we can we can prioritize it but for right now I, I, I want to make sure everybody's on the same page that IPMI is actually the, the the first feature yeah and I mean but I mean the other thing is you know since we're running this as an open source project you know it's if you have an itch then scratch it dude if someone else wants to go off and work on getting encrypted data back support there, it's, it's not fundamentally going to be hard to do. You know, they just need to take the time to get familiar with the code base and do it. Right. Correct. Because I'm not going to I'm not going to reject someone's pull request that includes that support simply because I didn't write it. <laughs> We are we are we are not uh, mirroring other open source communities and pushing back hard on pull requests. We do test them though. All right. That was actually the I think what what I wanted there. I think this remains on my plate to to build the doc build some of the documentation, um, or or find it find where we had it because I I believe that we actually documented some of this stuff. So.
I'll, I'll produce a video or something, something fun like that. Okay, other topics, other items? I think we've covered everything that I'd expected us to cover and a little bit more. Other topics for the design meeting agenda? We won't cover, we won't be able to cover all this next week. But. Um, for RHEL 7 changes, unless um, I can manage to get some sort of RHEL 7 ISO legitimately as long as, as well as a hookup with um, subscriptions, um, that will probably get pushed off until there is a CentOS 7 ISO for me to play around with. That yeah, actually makes sense. Rob, is it worth um, putting something up uh, regarding creation and distribution of uh, packages and um, deployment guidelines so that people can just uh, install it on RHEL 7 and test it or on CentOS 7 and test it? Uh, always worth doing stuff like that, John. Yeah. Yeah, we just need to, you know, be able to build packages for it. Right. Remember that. Yeah. Um, you, the admin, so the, I'll, I'll actually I'll make a, dis, a distinction here. Um, so RHEL 7 for uh, deployed hosts, There's, it's going to take a, a bigger lift to switch to 7 for the admin server because of the system, the system D changes. Um, so CentOS that, 7 is... Well, on. that's only true for running inside of Docker. If you, we do the admins inside of VMs, um, that's not really going to be an issue. That's just adding a that's just adding a unit file for Crowbar and using that instead of the init script. Oh, okay. Right. I thought I thought we couldn't switch to. I thought we were stuck on set on six five because we we didn't have um, a good way to initialize it. That's only true in the Docker container. And I uh, about uh, about a week before Bell stopped working on. Crowbar. I actually wrote a. Uh, I actually wrote a little kickstart that will bootstrap the KVM admin node in CentOS 6.5, and modifying that for uh, CentOS 7 would actually be a good thing to do. Okay. Also, we may want to consider working with CentOS 7 now that that's available. Is it available? I didn't mm -hmm. think it was generally. I didn't think the final release was generally available yet. I thought they the final had, release uh, won't happen until RHEL 7 is out for a while, but there are links to it being available. Yeah, I thought they just had uh, essentially bug testing releases out right now. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, they had pre release stuff out. All right, so so we need to talk. We need to figure out timing. Once again, this is one of those community itch things. Good. Um, I would actually make this make this a topic for the next planning meeting. And this might end up, we might might want to move Travis workflow into the next planning meeting instead. Excellent. Other topics before we close? I think that's it. Excellent. Everybody, hey, I appreciate it. This was a great meeting. A lot of good discussion. Thank you. Talk to you all next Wednesday. Morning.